Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who watched my recent extra chatty video where I talked about why I'm no longer shopping at Chanel, I know that as a follow-up, many of you wanted to hear my thoughts on potentially downsizing my Chanel bag collection. So I decided to make this video, even though I haven't made my final decisions yet, I think about downsizing from time to time, but I have a hard time with that idea because uh, given the Chanel price increases, I know that if I were to let any of these go and I were to regret it I would have to pay quite a bit more to try to acquire it again so that's the number one reason why I'm having a tricky time deciding uh, second reason is because I do actually use all of these items I use them in rotation so they all serve a purpose I know that it's quite a lot and I talked about it feeling a little bit repetitive but it's not like any of these just sit on a shelf looking pretty they are still being used and enjoyed so that's another reason why I'm having a difficult time deciding which which ones to let go and the last and third reason is because I do have a daughter and she's 12 going on 13 so she's right at that preteen stage and she's just starting to get interested in you know pretty things and fashion and she has her eye on a couple of these bags of course she's still too young but she has mentioned to me that she wouldn't want me to sell some of them so of course as a mom I'm taking that into consideration as well so let's get started I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces that I am going to consider as bags. Even though the large O case in the bag in houndstooth tweed, this black and white one, which I think is beautiful, even though that one is considered an SLG, I do use it as a clutch as like a seasonal evening type of clutch. So I'm gonna consider it as a bag. These two up front are wallet on chains. The walks are also technically considered SLGs, still I believe, even though they're priced as bags. I don't use these as wallets ever. I always use them as bags. So I'm gonna include these as well. So it's a total of nine. And as you can see, if you're just looking at it from the top down like this, you have a lot of the common Chanel traits, right? So the chain and the quilting and the CC and all of that. So that's why I sometimes feel like maybe it's too much of the same same. I also gravitate towards neutrals. Once again, as you can see, so it's not like I have a lot of variety in terms of color, uh, lots of beige tone, black tone. I've got one shimmery gold metallic, which is a little unusual for me, so I'm going to talk about that. But let's get started. Which bags would I keep and which ones would I let go? This is how I feel today. This might change. The first one I want to talk about here is the Chanel Vintage. This is my oldest Chanel bag out of the bunch here. This is about 22 years old, I wanna say. Vintage lambskin, and it's got the silver hardware. It's actually, ha it has the flat CC hardware, which is a little bit um, more unique. You see a lot more of the rounded CC now, and you'll see what I mean when I compare with the others. For example, like if you look closely at this one here, this is a newer beige clair medium classic flap that I got from the boutique a couple years ago, and it's more rounded, the lettering on the CC. So I do love this. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I also did a video recently talking about lambskin versus caviar and how I really gravitate towards the sort of luxury, soft, beautiful vibe of lambskin, even though it is a little bit more delicate. So this one, I would definitely put in the keep pile. And I have actually considered letting this go multiple times. Yes, believe it or not. And I've talked myself out of it because every time I touch it or pick it up, I feel it and I'm thinking, am I crazy? This is gorgeous. It's my one vintage. I hunted for this. It took me so long to find this in the condition and the price that I wanted. I got it from Fashion File a few years ago. And really what you can't get through the camera is how it feels. It is so buttery soft. I have other lambskin bags that are soft, but this is by far the softest. And I think it is because it's vintage. Yes, there's something about the quality of vintage, but I also think that it has aged over time and it has absorbed you know, natural oils from my hands. It has just, I don't know, something about it is very special. And I think it, it doesn't do it justice just to look at this through the camera, but uh, I try to convey as much as I can how beautiful I think this is. It's also a black color, but as you can see in the sunlight, it kind of comes off as navy as well. So there's just like, I don't know, there's dimension and it, it feels like it changes in different lighting. 
and it's got a nice sheen to it also I paid a really good price for this uh, at the time I paid for the price that I paid for this is now less than the price of a mini flap that you would get at the boutique so that just goes to show how much the Chanel price increases have affected you know everything but here we go so this I would put in the keep pile so let's put that down maybe I will split the groups into yeah two then let's talk about this one so kind of repetitive right even though different color different leather this is caviar also hardware is the true yellow gold hardware and I think this is the only Chanel bag that I have that has the true yellow gold because the other ones in the back which I'll show you on the minis are the uh, champagne gold which is a little bit more muted so this one I think it's beautiful and I I really love this shade of the beige Claire I liked how it had slightly pink kind of pink and ivory undertones to it and I compared it with other beige Claire shades in the boutique at the time because surprisingly they had more than one at that time and I was able to put them side by side and I really love this shade if you didn't know seasonally caviars will you know differ colors will differ um, and also even in the same season if you look at a batch of different colors depending on how the color was absorbed um, it may vary as well so I really like this one a lot I think it's really pretty it's still a a little bit stiff not in a bad way but it's just like new you know it has that new feeling because it's it's not it's not like the vintage for sure so I really like this bag but if I really had to go through this exercise of downsizing I think I would let this go and keep this one yeah so this is gonna go over to this pile here then let's go to the walks so this is the first Chanel bag that I bought pre-loved. It was my first time ever venturing into the pre-loved market, although I paid roughly the same price as retail at the time. I think it was like a $50 or $75 discount. The only reason why I went pre-loved is because I wanted this bag so badly and every Chanel boutique that I inquired did not have any. So this is a black caviar and it's got the silver hardware and it's got the original snap closure now they have the magnetic closure which I'll show you on this other version but I actually don't mind the original snap I mean sometimes you have to like look at it when it's on you to match it up so that takes a couple extra seconds but I don't mind at all and this is the inside I always have a base shaper in here and I actually store the bag with the shaper. So this is one of my most used. I dress up with it. I also wear it very casually. It's super easy. I think because it has the silver hardware also, it just feels a little bit more casual. It doesn't look as dressy. It looks more youthful sometimes. It looks more, I don't know. It's It doesn't pop as much. So this one I would have to keep for sure. In fact, yeah, I don't know, maybe at some point, I don't know why I'm doing this to myself, but maybe at some point down the road, I'll do a video of if I could only keep one Chanel bag out of all of these, which one would it be? Because back in the day, before I got to this point, I always said one was plenty for me. And then I got kind of out of hand here, but this one is a keeper, it's super versatile and it's perfect for everyday essentials. Now let's talk about this. This is also a wallet on chain. It's the filigree version and it has the beige. Now it's a different kind of beige than the beige Claire, you see? And the caviar grains on here are tiny little pebbles. So this is the, the seasonal pebbles. <laughs> I don't know how to call it. Yeah, seasonal pebbles. And then the classics usually have like the broader, wider pe pebbles. So this is the filigree it's got the champagne gold hardware and then it's got the black large cc and the trim now i fell in love with this bag immediately as soon as i saw it i was like yes no second thoughts i wasn't planning on buying this but as soon as i saw it i was like it has to be mine and i was really really happy and i'm still happy to have it by the way this version doesn't have a back pocket here versus the classic it has the mona lisa pocket okay so this is also one of my most used because it's so easy. I think I'm just a fan of walk style bags in general. As I mentioned before, this has the magnetic closure, so it's just easier 
they've updated it. Some people out there who used to own the original with the snap button have sold theirs and then swapped it out by buying a new one with the magnetic. I don't feel like it bothers me at all. It doesn't bother me at all to, to swap out my original one, but this is definitely easier. There we go. I've got another base shape print there. I think I still have a 10% promo code for M Boutique. It's an Australian based company that makes these little base shapers. So yeah, this one I think is super cute. This is one that my daughter first made fun of. She critiqued it. Now she really, really likes it a lot and is like, you can't sell that. But if I had to choose, oh gosh, I would keep this one even though, see it's hard because I feel like if I keep this one now, it's super repetitive because now I've put two black Chanel bags in the keep pile and no color yet. So I feel like logically it makes more sense to keep this one. It's a little bit more fun, but long term, I think I would never get sick of this. Whereas this one, there is a risk that I might get tired of it because it's a little bit more bold. It's clearly got the big CC in the front. So I don't know, but I still really like this bag and I enjoy it a lot. So I'm going to have to put these off to the side here. So this one goes with this one and I'll organize this as I go through the video so I can make clear piles but so far I'm dividing two for two and since I don't have an even number of bags it's gonna have to be five and four or four and five uh, let's do the minis so I've got this and this one here okay so I've got the rectangle mini which is in the caramel lambskin and it's the champagne gold hardware and then I've got this, oh, let's see if I can capture the sun. You see that? It's beautiful in the sun. It shimmers so, so nicely. So this is the square mini and it's the gold metallic, also rose, not rose gold, <laughs> uh, champagne gold hardware. But in the sun, it gives me rose gold vibes. Do you guys see that? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Okay. And then here's the back, both with the pockets. So... I was so, so, so intent, like I was so, so, um, uh, what's the word, committed to getting a square. A square mini is what I wanted. I wanted a square mini much more than a rectangle mini because I had the classic flaps and I just felt like this is really nice, but it's just like a shrunken down version of the classic flap, whereas a square just felt so cute and compact and I wanted the square. I bought these the same year from the 21P collection, pretty much back to back. I wasn't expecting that, but this color was being released and I was like, oh my gosh, that is basically one of my favorite colors of all time. You guys know if you've been here, I love caramel and camel in my wardrobe, in my everything. So I was like, I have to have it. Basically jumped through hoops to get this. I got it from Bergdorf's. And then soon after I bought this, my SA at my usual Chanel boutique, I don't usually shop at Bergdorf's, so my usual Chanel boutique, she reached out and was like, I, I just got this one in and I thought of you. And I was like, why did you think of me? I'm not a metallics kind of girl. I'm not like, this is, I usually go for muted, solid, you know? And she was like, what do you think? I'm like, uh, but then as soon as I saw it, I was like, yes. So yeah, I wound up getting these about a month apart, I think super happy use them very regularly surprisingly i've fallen in love with this pretty much either the same or more than the square i don't know why i like the length of the square better it's a little shorter and it hangs better i'm five foot six um and it just sits nicely the mini rectangle chain is a little bit longer but it's still okay but here's the thing my phone's my phones have like grown in size i have the iphone 13 pro max with case, it still fits in here, but now it's a little bit snug. Fits fine, but it's still a little bit snug. And this one has a little bit more room lengthwise, so that's a factor. The metallic, I keep thinking like, it's so beautiful. I wear this, especially for date nights, but I don't know, it's dressy. It's very dressy. I don't usually wear this casual, so I'm not gonna throw this over jeans and a t-shirt, although I think that would look really cool like a relaxed look with this. Maybe I should try it. But I tend to grab this for date nights, like evenings. This one, however, I wear anytime whenever I feel like it. And it goes well with my wardrobe because I have a lot of this shade, like camel tones in my wardrobe. 
Yeah, so, oh gosh, I have to make a decision, right? <laughs> I'm like stalling. So if I had to let one go, um, it would be the gold mini. Yeah. Except this one too, every time I pick it up and I, it catches the light, like look at that guys. See how it catches the light over here? I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It's the prettiest bag I have in my whole collection. That's how I feel. And my daughter loves this bag. And when I got this bag, for some reason, I got like this flash image of me giving this to my daughter when she's older and her wearing this like at her engagement party or her wedding or her bridal party. I don't know why. It feels kind of bridal sometimes when I look at it. That's what I mean. It looks fancy. It looks formal, dressy. So I have this like image of her and she loves this bag so much. So I would have to, you know, talk to her, I guess, if I were to let this go. Not that it's her decision, but I want to take her thoughts into consideration. So yeah, I think this is going to stay for a while. I'm still going to use it and enjoy it. But in this exercise, if I had to choose, I can't let this one go, guys. This color is like this this is a chameleon color it changes with lighting it changes with outfits it's so soft it's beautiful um they're both lambskin but this is treated for the metallic kind of shine so they feel different this is definitely the buttery soft kind and this has a little bit more texture to it i don't know yeah i i would have to pick this one to keep but this would not be easy to let go and i know there's a few of you have been reaching out saying that you want to buy this from me and I'm like, oh, hmm, uh. and I, I, I do think about letting it go from time to time just because like my my practical side comes in like, do I really need all these? But then when I look at it aesthetically, I'm thinking, why would I let this go? It's gorgeous. I don't know. All right. Oh, it's so weird. Like all the light colored bags are heading out on the chopping block. OK, I've got three more left. This one. So this is kind of a unicorn, I think. Um, it's it's used as a clutch. It's got the, again, champagne gold hardware, black and white, houndstooth tweed. I love houndstooth. And then it's uh, it's got the interwoven ribbons. So it says Coco Chanel. It's really, really intricate. And this one too, my daughter had critiqued. I did a video a long time ago where she was with me and we critiqued it and she, you guys some of you guys got a kick out of it because she was i think like 10 at the time and she said or nine i don't know she said oh mom this looks like chanel took all the like trash bits like all the leftover bits that they were going to recycle and then they reused it here and i was like hey so i was like hmm, you kind of ruined it for me girl but she was like yeah no it looks like all like the leftover materials and you know what i don't think she's wrong and if Chanel did that, great. They get a gold star for sustainability. <laughs> I am half half joking, but no, seriously, if, if this is leftover material and this is what came of it, hey, I think it's beautiful. I think it's very, very, very classic Chanel. You think of tweed. It's the only tweed piece that I own um, from Chanel. And it wasn't like super expensive. It's the large O keys. So even with the price increases, this is not going to like be crazy expensive compared to some of these other bags here. And it holds a lot. I've done a ton of videos on this and it's got the inside zipper. So this one I would want to keep just because of the unicorn factor, but it is a bit seasonal. I'm not wearing this in the summer or spring. It's really mostly fall, winter, mostly winter because in the fall I gravitate towards like warm brown colors and like nature colors. This is really, this is really winter. So I feel like it's limited in the usage and it's also like it kind of stands out it pops so i want to keep this but if i were forced to downsize i would let this go because my practical side definitely overtakes my emotional side so that will have to join the little beige guys here okay i've organized a little bit here so here is the potentially go pile here's the keep pile and here is my jumbo single flap i think i had said a couple times this is like a forever bag and that's still how i feel my daughter loves this bag so much it's her favorite from the chanel collection here but also this is the bag that is kind of symbolic for me not to get like so sentimental because i'm not that sentimental about bags but um you may recall when i talked about my whole journey of growing up 
and starting life and being obsessed with bags and all of that, I waited a long time, um, over a decade to get this bag because when I first tried it on, I was in my 20s, starting out with my career, had just got married, just bought our first place, had a mortgage, obligations, you know, savings, all of that, wanting to build our future, you know, nest egg and future family and all that. So I had priorities and I remember thinking, I want this bag so badly, but I'm going to leave it. So I waited a long time, like I said, over a decade. So getting this was kind of like, not a I've made it type of thing, but sort of like I've earned it in my head, in my mind. So I did get this and I got it pre-loved for an amazing price. And I remember doing the math and thinking, that's so weird how things come full circle because the price that I paid for this pre-loved was not that much off from the price I would have paid brand new at the time when I was in my 20s. So either way, the fact that I waited, I didn't like, I wasn't screwed price wise it all worked out it's in beautiful condition and i do love that it's a single flap i think back then i wouldn't have known the difference between single flap and double flap and i might have wound up buying the double flap and that's a bit heavier so this also as i mentioned on the vintage this has the flat cc hardware which i really like and i like that this is lighter and it's easier to get in and out of because it's got the single and then the grommets are side to side this way so it's just easier to pull this out it's got the huge pocket so this one is a keeper but i realize as i'm talking that this side is looking all too similar so let me just put this down okay so yeah as you can see this side has three black bags oh my gosh i know black bags are great because they're easy to use but see this is where i mean by like repetitive so three black bags one caramel and then here i feel like there's more variety but this is the potentially go side so it's not making sense but i'm literally as i'm talking through one by one and comparing this is how it's working out so i don't know what you guys think comment down below what you think if i need to swap some this one here in the middle i guess is like the tiebreaker if it's going to go left or right it's my Deauville tote so this one here is still pretty new to me i got it last year and it's my only tote that i have and i really like this i really like this um do i need it no i mean i don't need really technically any of these but i can use some other totes that i have that are less expensive you know not chanel but i really like it i really like the top handle i really like the long chain i like the versatility of how you can just like I don't know you can dress this up you can kind of make this look dressy even though it's a tote because it's got the hardware here i like it i like that it's not too loud it's black it's got some of the branding but it's not too too obvious you can turn it around i have an organizer in here at the moment it comes with this pouch did a bunch of reviews on this one as well so in the current sizing this is the medium size although they'll call it the small size and then the tag will say large so i did a whole video talking about the sizing that might be helpful um, but this is the what i call the goldilocks size meaning it's right in the middle it's the new version that has the combination so i want to keep this because i use it a lot it's a great travel bag as well but if i were forced to downsize this would also go I'm just going to put it in the middle because if I put it behind on this side, you won't be able to see it. Okay, so that would go as well. So that would mean four here, five here. But again, I feel like all the fun, slightly more different, interesting bags are on this side, which is that's exactly the opposite of what I wanted. I, I, I want if I'm going to downsize, I also want to maintain some variety. But clearly, I love my black bags and then this one. So which ones would you guys do like would you swap you know i don't know i love i still really enjoy these and i think they're super pretty and they work for me they, they work for me so i know that in my last video when i talked about this uh there were a few of you who said like no just keep them all keep them all and i understand that sentiment you know if i'm using them and i'm enjoying them I can keep them all. I don't need to let go of any. I think it's just like there's like an internal conflict in my brain of, I think because I also grew up very, um, my parents were quite frugal and I'm still pretty frugal in many, many ways, actually. It may not seem like that with these bags, but in like almost every other area of my life. And I'm really into saving and I'm pretty conservative. So I think there's kind of like the, 
the fun side of me that conflicts with the conservative practical side of me sometimes. I don't know if you guys can relate to that, but I am happy with this collection. I think that it is more than enough and that is why I'm not going to be adding. I'm not planning to shop at Chanel anymore or add anymore, at least not for bags. Um, and I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I don't know if you want to call that purse piece. I just feel like abundant. I don't even want to call it purse piece because I feel like that term has been totally overused and kind of misunderstood. And I've always said purse piece is probably a temporary thing. But for for me, Chanel bag wise, I feel like it's I've covered every ground. Unless something drastic happens where all of a sudden I'm like, you guys, I'm changing my look and I'm I'm gonna go for like a crazy pop of color. That might add something interesting, but clearly my style is this, neutral, kind of quiet, kind of understated. I mean, the fact that even this metallic, which I, I feel like has still a neutral look, this still sometimes feels a little wild for me. I know, it's silly. That's, that's what it is. Like My comfort zone is kind of small when it comes to these things. So anyway, I don't know if I did right by these bags you know like i kind of feel bad that i put these on the right side um but if i had to as of how i feel today i just know that i could not let these four go for sure so i guess by default it would then be these that would have to go right let me know if you guys go through these kind of exercises too not just with chanel but like any of your belongings and how you make your decisions if you've been watching my channel for a while you know that i have a generally easy time letting go because i don't get super sentimental or attached to my material goods especially if i'm not using them and they're not bringing me any kind of like use or enjoyment i am very quick to cut ties i've sold my very first chanel bag i've sold my very first designer bag ever from like 20 plus years ago which was a gucci i've gifted many of my bags to my mom and several to my friends um, i've donated a bunch i've sold some here to you guys i've given some away to you guys so i i will you know rotate and cut and curate and edit as I need to, but these I am using and enjoying, so that's why this exercise is still remaining only hypothetical at this point. But if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and you enjoy this type of content, I would love for you to join our community by subscribing, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.